channel my name is crystal um like i said in all my videos there's a like button there's a comment button there's a subscribe button hit any button you want sweetie just just watch my shit um so we're not going to do shady people i know this week i had to take a step back and do some self-care um for myself like i said in the beginning um if you might watch my introduction video um I'm sharing a part of my life that I've never really talked about. Um, I definitely didn't deal with it when I was in a program for a year. I just didn't talk about any other shit. So when certain um, things happen, it just sometimes it, it can be um, too much because I pretty much suppressed everything and um, never talked about any of this shit before. So. Let me give you just a little bit of, of a bit of a story that I'm not going to get into because that's going to be for another video. The end of 88, I lost my kids to CPS. The allegations was my boyfriend at the time molested my kids while I watched. Now at the time, my boyfriend was white. When I say white, white with blonde hair, blue eyes. He was a white dude. Um, he was a good guy. Um, Everything was insufficient evidence, but that's a whole nother story, and, and, and we're almost um, to that point. But if you've been following my story, you know I left off from the house that I lived in and moved down the street to my friend's house. So I work in mental health. I've worked in mental health for 18 years. I've had different positions and right now my position is um, I decided to work in housing to find housing um, for our clients, like good housing for them. And so what I do is I go and I check out um, the homes, especially if they're new, to make sure they're adequate and they're clean and they have food and kind of see it and meet the owners of these places before moving anybody into these places. I like to check them out. So it was new. I put in uh, the address in, in the Google, which was South, South, I live in San Diego, South 36th Street. Um, so it was already bad as I'm driving now because as I'm driving there my navigation kept slowing down and it kept putting me on wrong exits and it was just like frustrated from the very freaking beginning. So anyway, I get off the freeway and I get to this place and lo and behold, it's in the neighborhood where I'm talking about right now. Like I can, I tried to avoid driving to see see in that house that um, my kids were in and um, the house that I was at living down like I tried to avoid all that shit but for some reason I don't know if the Lord was playing with me or not I couldn't find parking in front of this house that I found because I found once I saw the address I had passed it and I couldn't like back up because there was a car behind me so I had to I had to, I had to drive all the way around which made me look at this whole freaking neighborhood, made me drive in front and pass of the house. And um, at the time, you know, I looked and I was just like, oh, it's horrible, a little dusty ass, it was dusty. Like none of those homes over there um, have been upgraded since I feel like I left. It was just nasty, it was just horrible. Um, but seeing that shit kind of fucked me up. Sorry for the language. I might use a few, but I won't do too much. Because um, I tried to forget everything. The good and the bad. Um, because there was nowhere for the good to go. And the bad was too bad for me to want to freaking remember. So that's kind of what I've been dealing with and, and going through. And I didn't realize that until, um, you know, well, let me go back. 
I don't know if you've ever experienced like having, I don't know, for me, let me just say my experience. What came back to my head was, and what I can see is my kids playing in the yard, what type of mother I was. Um, Cause I lost my kids. When I lost my kids, my baby wasn't even one. My one wasn't even two. My, I had a three-year-old and a five-year-old. So my whole existence of being a mom was cut off um, right there when they took my kids. Um, and it just didn't get better from there. So anyway, those are all the feelings and all the things that came back to me. And by Monday, it just really came to a head, you know, for me because I was realizing I was, um, I felt like I was getting into some weird ass depression. All I wanted to do was sleep. Um, for me, if I sleep, I don't have to think about anything. So I just wanted to sleep and I just felt very drained and very tired and um, angry. You know, for me, it's always been comfortable for me to be angry rather than to be hurt and, and cry because then I feel like um, I'm too vulnerable to any, I, I don't want that feeling. I feel like I'm, you know, I don't want to feel weak. My husband can tell you in the beginning of our relationship for the first couple of years, I just wouldn't cry. And I still have a problem with that today. I just don't like to. So it's like, it's easier for me to be angry than to feel the emotion. So that's kind of what I've been dealing with. And so on Monday, I was like, I just kind of, um, you know, I, I've been in a negative, like everything was just been negative. Like everything in my head has been negative. If you say something to me, I have a negative comment. Like it was just fucking negative. I was just like irritating to my own self. And Tuesday morning I had got up and I had got up at four, like, I have insomnia, so I don't care what time I go to bed. I'm waking up between 3.30 and 4. So I got up on Tuesday morning, and oh my God, I kept crying. I started having all these memories, all these things that I, I purposely forgot just to to survive mentally. Um, I, I, I started remembering and just seeing, and just everything came back, and it was so fucking overwhelming for me that... I was crying, just having panic attacks. Like as I, I, I just, it was a lot. Um, so my husband finally, you know, I went back up to our room around six so I can start getting ready for work. And he noticed something was wrong with me. So he asked me, you know, what was wrong? And I told him, I said, you know, um, this shit is kind of too much. I didn't think it was gonna be I didn't think I was gonna feel what I'm feeling. And cause I think for me, I think I should be over a certain shit. But for me, it's kind of hard. Cause right now I have a kid in prison. I have one on his way to prison. So it's kind of hard um, to be at peace with certain things when your kids still still suffer. So I was just home, I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this shit, man. I said, I think I'm gonna back out. Um, and I'm not even at the really fucked up part yet. So I just don't know if I can do it. You know, my husband said, look, he says, I support you doing this. And he says, we talked about this before you did it. And you said, you know, some shit's going to come up because you've never dealt with it. Like me and my husband met 20 years ago, almost 21 years ago in rehab. Um, he spent the whole year with me, so he knows. I didn't talk about shit. I didn't share. I just didn't trust people, and I still don't. I still have trust issues um, all the way around, and forever will have that. Um, <clears throat> very, you know, I put people at pause real quick. You're guilty first before your ass is anything innocent to me. I got to check you out. So I just never shared anything. So he's like, you know, you hang in there you can do this you know you can do it he just encouraged me <clears throat> and so then I went to work and when I got to work I was watching a show called the breakfast Bre breakfast breakfast club and they um, interviewed if you do watch blackish I watch blackish is Anthony Anderson's mom the lady who plays his mom on the show I think her name is Evelyn I'm not really sure but she was talking about a book she's doing a book on her life and going over it and she said you know um, 
threw that book in the, in the in the pool, you know, twice. You know, she says when you start going over your past, she says that shit gets hard because um, everything comes back, anger comes back, feelings come back, the visual of it comes back. Um, she says, but you gotta press through that shit because it's gonna get hard and it's gonna hurt, but it will get better. You gotta do it. Um, oh my God, that encouraged me. I felt like, you know, because I barely just started. You know watching the breakfast club on youtube so this felt like that was for me um to hear and to watch that i i gotta keep doing this you know i don't have a whole lot of subscribers i have 20 now last week i had 16 and and i'm gonna give that tribute to um god I, god i had her name in my head right now Mona Simone. Mona Simone. She is a YouTuber and she's a positive YouTuber who is there to talk about real shit and help you with your shit, even your finances. So please check out Mona Simone. She likes to say Freddie's daughter. I like it when she say that because my husband's name is Freddie. So anyway, um, yeah, that's kind of like where I'm at. And that shit just put me in a tailspin. And even when I came home, that Tuesday we had took my uh, it was my son's birthday so we took him we had went out to dinner uh, and it was cool but as soon as I got home it's like it was just negative shit all over again it was just all over again I'm like why the hell can I just not get rid of these damn negative feelings it was just like too much um, so when I got home you know it was like 8 30, it's like I just went to bed. It's like I was still in that mind space. It's like I just want to go to sleep because I can't stop thinking about shit and I don't know I don't know how to make it go away. Like I didn't know how to make it go away. I can't shoot dope anymore. I don't yeah I don't know how to make the shit go away. You know, it's just there. Um so I went to bed and and I was just kind of shitty after that. So I woke up the next morning again at four and everything in my head was negative like every thought that came to my damn mind was negative and my husband knows that's my pet peeve i can't stand to just be around people who just have negative shit and bad shit to say like on gone it's like if you can't make me laugh or give me a good story it's like i don't want to hear it like i got my own shit so for me to be in that space it irritated the shit out of me um where i just like god help me you know i literally just i i literally said god help me like at this point I don't know what to do I don't even know what to pray for I don't even know what to ask for all I know is I need this to not be there um, and I'm telling you all of a sudden I start thinking about our dinner last night I start thinking about being with my family I started thinking about my husband and how supportive he's been and went outside I smoked a cigarette I'm like you know God told me, you need to apologize to your husband. And I heard that so clear. You know, I'm a Christian, y'all. I'm not the best one. The Lord is going to have a lot of questions um, for me when I go. I know he is. Um, but I still believe in God. I still give him the glory for things that come to me and that he shows me. I always give him that. I'll never, ever deny him or that. Because I truly believe that's where it comes from. I don't screw around with churches to me churches ain't shit god forgive me if that's wrong but they're not there's too much evil in the church so i have my relationship with god so i'll always give him the glory that anything that comes to me and i really heard that so i came upstairs and my husband was kind of waking up and i just hugged him you know i said you know what i'm sorry i said just because you know i'm going through something and I know I'm going through something, don't mean I have to be an asshole to you. So you don't deserve me being um, bitchy or an asshole. I said, cause you've done nothing but them been there for me. And I said, and I love you and I'm sorry. You know, I felt like I needed to do that. Um, my husband's a sweet guy. He's not weak, he's meek. He's a meek man. He gets me together when he needs to get together, but I know when I need to get my own self together too. You know, I, at some point you get tired of your goddamn self. Forgive me. But you do. You know, I did. I got tired of myself. But I knew what I needed to do. You know, so I just say that to say, if you are going through something, um, you're going to feel 
you, you're going to feel some pain. You're going to go through some stuff. And for those who are in relationship or whatever, let your mate go through it for the minute. But the person that's going through it, don't put your shit on that person. Especially if that person is there for you. Don't put your shit on that person. Um, support is an awesome thing to have. And for me to have it for my husband the way I have it, you know, I thank God for that. Because you... If you've been following me, my story's been shitty as far as the male population went. Um, it got better than it got bad. But it's awesome now. So um, go through your shit, but know when you're starting to be full of shit and, and say you, you're damn sorry and get it together. But that's all I got for, for this Sunday update. I will be back with the story next week. You know, I totally believe in... in self-care and i know now for myself when i need to say you know what i need to take a step back because this shit is um and i'm not even at the real bad part yet and but the memories the memories that i blocked it just it was so real and so vivid that it was like i said it was overwhelming and it was hard um it was hard. But anyway, I'll see you guys next Sunday with the shady people I know. I might do my little silly speedy hair video. I still have to do a hair video that I haven't did yet. So I need to get on that. But, you know, I have to take a little minute. So I love you guys. Thank you guys for supporting me. And I will see you guys next week. <coughs> Peace. Okay, okay. y'all. I forgot to tell you something. So that, I, that, that uh, place that I went to look at. I was asking God, I'm like, I don't want to have to go there no more. Like, I really didn't want to have to go back there anymore. So Wednesday, I get a call from um, the owner, from from the guy who was opening this place. And he said, you know, I needed to give you a call. He says, um, the person who he was leasing the home from pulled his lease. And he had to take everything out of the house and move everything over the weekend so it's not opening up and he was going to start going to some more um llc meetings and, and and try to like get it together so he can open up the proper way because apparently he didn't tell uh the, the landlord he was leasing from that he was opening up a place where he was going to be boarding other people so he you know he admitted that so anyway i say that to say I don't know what God was doing, but apparently he wanted me to see that. I guess it was one of those things where I needed to face what I needed to face where I'm at. And I just find that so incredibly weird, but my husband says it's not weird. He said, thank God there's someone out there in the universe, and you know who that is, that's looking out for you, making sure that you get what you need, because you need it to see that you needed to remember you needed it because now that place is it's gone it's just gone um god sends angels in a really really weird way but i'm glad that um he's there for me so anyway that's it now i'm really gone i'll see you guys next week i just thought i'd share that with you leave a comment below and tell me what you think was it a god intervention like what do you think about this whole thing you should be able to leave a damn comment on this shit this is some shit you could leave a comment about so please leave me a comment tell me what you think um peace see you guys next week what do i know what do i know